10 math. We are going to be taking a look at a very important tool that we're going to use to better understand quadratics today. So our first task is I want you to tell me where do these quadratics cross the x-axis? There are four of them. You have the tools and the skills that we've been developing over the last couple days to do this. How do I use factoring? to tell where these quadratics cross the uh, x-axis. Hannah. You get the roots? Yeah, and how would I get the roots using factoring? Well, yeah, it's kind of like before I FOIL it, then I can see, see the roots, right? So let's take a look. When I look at y equals x squared plus 2x minus 15, and I factor that, what is that? Go ahead and factor it. This would be y is equal to what? It's going to be two binomials. x is going to lead both binomials. And then I'm going to have two numbers in here. And what do they do? Who can see the numbers? Negative 5 and 3. Negative 5 and positive 3. Very good. So x minus 5, x plus 3. So where do those uh, where does this quadratic cross the x-axis? What are the zeros? Plus five and negative three. Plus five and negative three. So Reed remembers you got to flip these signs. The reason he has to flip the signs is if I put positive five in here, that will be five minus five is clearly zero. Zero times some other number over here happens to be eight, but who cares because it's just going to be multiplied by zero anyway, and that's going to give me a y value of zero. Here's where y is 0, and that's the whole x-axis. So positive 5 is one of them. I'm going to put my positive 5 about there, calling every one of these little dots like 2. Okay, so there's 5, and then negative 3, so that would be right there. So this one, if I sketch it, it looks kind of like this. Pew, wee, oh, I missed. And we, oh, I hit it. That was better. Yeah, something like that, right? Okay, so that's one of them. Hello, Alex. Hello. This one here. Can I factor it? Will that one factor? Yes. Yeah. So tell me where that one crosses the x-axis. It's going to be y is equal to, what's my first step here? Oh, wait, I thought that was a 15. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just a 5. If I made that a 15, it factors a lot easier. Yeah, make that a 15. It's much easier. Divide it all by 3? Yeah, divide it all by 3. So I'm going to have 3 multiplied by x squared plus 5x minus 4. Wait, that doesn't that doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> make this a plus. <laughs> make that a plus, and then it factors. Yeah, do me this one. 3 times x squared plus 5x plus 4. What's that? 3 times be 2 binomials. X is going to lead both binomials. They're both going to be positive numbers this time. And what are the two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 5? 1 and 4. 1 and 4. Yeah, that's right. 1 and 4. We should probably have just done the original one, but whatever. And then this one, X squared. Oh, and so this one, 3 times X plus 1 times X plus 4. Where does that cross the Y axis, the X axis? Yeah, just flip these signs, negative 1 and negative 4. So here's negative 1. Oop. Here's negative 4. And it's much steeper than the other parabola, so it goes like this. Boo, way down here. And then up. Woo, and then up like that. Terrible drawing today, but uh, I think it's because I don't know how this quite right. And now, uh, this one here, y is equal to x squared minus 16. Four and what flavor of four, the other one? Great. So people are doing this one in their head. That's super. Y is equal to X plus four times X minus four. This is a difference of squares. Always factors this way. Very good. So here's a, a minus four. I get that root here. X negative four is X, and that will create a zero. And here positive four is another zero. So that's there. And that will have its vertex right on the y-axis, right down here. So it turns around there and goes up. And oh my goodness, it's so ugly. 
Anyway, yours will be more beautiful on your page. I don't know what is happening to me today. Check me for brain damage. How about this one? Can you factor that? Can you get a number that multiplies to 1 and adds to negative 3? No. So it does not factor. But just because it doesn't factor cleanly across the integers doesn't mean it doesn't cross the, uh, the x-axis here. Some parabolas you're going to get, and they look like this. Woo, and they have no roots. They never touch the x-axis. Other parabolas, like perfect square trinomials, might come down here and touch, and then go up and only touch once. Okay, But this one here, let's take a look at its standard form and see what we can see about it. And I'm just going to clean this mess off. It's just terrible. It's just really bothering me how, how badly I'm drawing today. So x squared minus 3x plus 1. Where is its y-intercept? 1. So we'll call this 1 here. That's the y-intercept. Is it rising or falling as it crosses the y-axis? It's falling, and it has a negative slope of 3. So it's actually pretty slopey. Do you expect that this crosses the y-axis or not? It does, and I'll show you why. Because I know that if this is minus 2, it does factor. It would be uh, x minus 1 squared if this were minus 2. And x minus 1 squared has 1 and only 1, 0. And that would be at the point x is 1. Because this is even, this is diving faster, it's going to have two zeros, and they're going to be right around this one. It's going to go down below and then back up again. So uh, here... It's going, it's going to look something like this. It crosses before 1, and it's going to go up somewhere after 1. Something like that Okay, is going to be my sketch. And that's just based on direction of opening. It's A, so it's positive. And its y-intercept is still very close to the x-axis. And then from that slope, I can determine it's going to go down and then come up again. It will touch twice. But notice that it's touching between the integers. That's why we can't factor it cleanly with our now amazing factoring skills. We need another tool. Dun, 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 dun. Now we will learn to solve non-factorable quadratics with real roots using the quadratic formula. Okay, so we asked you to, let's, let's do this one first actually. So we're gonna use this one here for our first quadratic formula uh, test subject. And what we want to find is, where does this thing cross the x-axis? That's important information that we get about the quadratic. And so that's going to be applicable in lots of situations. Where was the ball kicked from and where did it land? Or at what point do I make zero profit and what other point do I make zero profit? Those are interesting numbers because my maximum profit is in the middle. right? So I want these numbers. I want to be able to find them. So here, uh, let's do it. First, um, ooh, whoa, what's this? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to just write out our quadratic again first. Y is equal to, do I have a little bit of space? I didn't give myself any space. I'm going to do it down here. Y is equal to X squared plus a minus 3X plus 1. This was the quadratic that we were looking at. And we now know that if I have a quadratic that's written AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0, not Y, but zero, okay? Then this is true about x. What's true about x? x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you remember the episode from yesterday of Freaks and Geeks that we were watching, this actually made an appearance. They didn't name the whole thing because Daniel got bored before she started talking about the square root. But we're not going to get bored. We're going to learn this. And then we'll never be in Daniel's situation where we're cheating on a math test and we might get kicked out of school. Okay. So um, da, 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 da. let's try it. So what? this is a set of instructions. And it says if this is equal to 0, not equal to y, but equal to 0. And what does that mean? Well, yeah, this could be equal to y. But it's also equal to 0 at two points. y is 0 at two points. And those are the two points we're solving for. Or maybe one point. Maybe one point. Okay. So now let's go back here. And we'll do this in black. Because we're black and black, baby. Okay. Let's go up. So here we go. Uh, we are going to write it out like this. X is equal to 
negative b. So here is my negative b. Negative b is negative 3, so that would actually be 3. Negative of a negative is positive. And then I have plus or minus. The reason we have plus or minus in here graphically is because the plus or minus is what gives us the difference between these two roots. That's what separates them and gives us two possible solutions. One, I'm going to add a number. One, I'm going to subtract a number. The square root of b squared minus 4ac, so write that. b squared is negative 3. Should I put that in brackets? Absolutely squared. Because negative 3 squared is positive 9. Don't make a sign error there. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. Minus 4 times a, but here a is this number here. What number is that? 1. one. Yeah, so that's 4 times 1. We could write it times c, which is 1. Okay? All divided by 2 times a. So that would be 2 times 1. Okay? With me so far? All right, now let's go down. We're going to solve all these. x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 3, negative 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3, also 9. Minus 4 times 1 times 1, so that's minus 4. All divided by 2. Carry on one more line. Now I can write it like this. x is equal to 3 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2, or 3 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Is the square root of 5 an integer? 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. Is there a number like 2.5 squared is 5? Would you think it would be about in the middle there? Well, punch it on your calculator. See what your calculator tells you. Do you know how to punch this on your calculator? Punch it on your calculator. Try it. Make sure you know how to punch this. What you got for me? Um, I'm oh, yes. Bye for now. We'll see you later. Yeah. 2.23 blah, 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 blah. Right? It's about 2.24, but it's not an integer. Do you think that that decimal will ever end? It never ends. It keeps on going. If you want more and more and more detail, add more and more and more decimal places. Or just write root 5. Root 5 is a set of instructions. says, find me a number that when squared gives me 5. Okay? And this is why we have 3 minus something a little bigger than 2. Okay? 3 minus something a little bigger than 2 would be about, uh, you know, a little less than 1. So I have a little less than 1 over 2. So what that's telling me is this root here is a little bit less than one half. And then the other one would be three plus a number a little bit bigger than two. So that'd be a little bit bigger than five. Three plus two and a little bit. So five and a little bit over two would be a little bit bigger than two and a half. So then I have this other root here. It's going to be a little bit bigger than two and a half. So actually it should be over here should be over here. It actually goes quite deep. It's a lot deeper than I thought it would go. It goes like around there. Okay, cool. So I'm learning something from that. Yeah, it shows me something. So that's how I would interpret those two answers. It gives me two values of x. Yes, I can use a decimal approximation, but these approximations are not approximations. They're exact values. Okay. So one is not better than the other. Sometimes you just need an approximation. This one we would say this is x is equal to 5.2 4 over 2, and then I could evaluate that. That's 2.62, uh, 2.62, uh, or this one is 3 minus that, so that would be 0 0.76 over 2. So that's uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.38.
And so those are the two roots. That's what the quadratic formula will tell me. You'd never find that by factoring, but you can find it using quadratic formula. Okay? So let's take a look at another example. Find me the roots of y is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 13. So you can go ahead and set this up yourselves on your page. And the first thing that I suggest doing when you're approaching problems like this is actually go ahead and write out a little box. And this is what your little box is going to look like. Get your A, B, and C correct. Because we want to really, you know, substitute these in in the right spot at the right place everywhere. What's my A? What's my B? Twelve. What flavor? Negative twelve. And C? Thirteen. Thirteen. Great. So there is my little box. That's going to help me factor these. <clears throat> and uh, by putting it into the quadratic formula. Another place where I see the most mistakes with the quadratic formula is around this negative. If you have an A or a C that's also negative, remember that this will then become addition. Because 4 times A times C, if A or C is negative, then this would be a negative number. You'd be subtracting a negative number, that's a positive. Another way to think of this is instead of thinking of it as minus 4 times all this, think about it as negative 4 multiplied by these two things, and then add the result. That would be, that's what I do. Okay, So I'll write it out. This is x is equal to, if you've got this already, that's great, negative b. So what's my negative b? Positive 12, because I start with a negative b here, and it says minus b over there. So that's what I use, negative 12 plus or minus the square root of b, b squared, so it's negative 12 squared. He smiles, thinking of his favorite number. This is 144, positive 144. B squared is always positive. Minus 4 times A times C. So write that out. Minus 4 times 2 times 13. All right, so that will be 8 times 13. 8 times 13 is 78, I believe all over 2a. So you can write that out as 2 multiplied by 2. And work it out. This is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 78. Or I can just do that on my calculator. If you write this into your calculator correct, it will be correct. 144 minus 4 times 2 times 13 gives me 40. Yeah, that's right. Did I say 78? It must be 74. Yeah. yeah. 4 times 2 equals 8. 8 times 13 equals... What? Oh, it's 104. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, I was going from 7 and I subtracted a third. I gave you I gave you 6 times 13, not 8 times 13. I made a sign error. Sorry. So, um, yeah, this is 40 in here. All divided by 4. Okay? So, now I know that this that x is equal to... 12 over 4 plus the square root of 40 or 12 minus the square root of 40 all over 4. And those will be the places where this quadratic crosses the x-axis. Bingo, bango. This is plug and chug. This is when Lindsay says, okay, how do you solve this type of problem? And Daniel says, just use the quadratic formula. Yeah, it solves so many problems. Uh, and then she says, yes, so what is the quadratic formula? And he can't remember, but you're going to remember. So how can we remember this negative b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a? Oh, look, I remember it. I actually forget it from time to time if I haven't been teaching it a lot regularly. But how can you remember it? What do we do if you have something that looks like the stuff of math nightmares? How do you turn that into something familiar? How do you turn that into something you remember? You tell me. Are you going to make a post-it note and put it on like the, the passenger window in the car that drives you to school and look at it every day? Tell me, no, Mr. Jennings, I'm not going to do that because I don't think anyone's going to do that. Are you? No? Okay. So what are you going to do? That's my question. Are you going to make a poster for the quadratic formula, put it up in your room? Alexander? 
You could write, take a note now, yeah, and then do lots of practice problems, and then that will help you remember it, sure. And then if you ever forget it, you're going to Google it and then do some practice problems. Sure, that's, that's my strategy. Another thing you could do is, this is a very popular math, uh, math type uh, equation. It's very common. Uh, so let's take a look at YouTube. And we'll take a look at quadratic formula song. And it's huge. It's a huge song. Look at this. Look at this. 3.4 million views. Oh, wait. I could get copyright striked if I put this in the video. Okay, so we're not going to stay with them for the key change. Uh, but uh, you could absolutely sing this to yourself in the shower. And that's going to boost your math mark. What else? Are you doing anything more productive in the shower? I doubt it. So let's take a look at uh, more practice problems. Oh, that's the wrong, the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. Okay, and then I said we can also find the uh, roots of negative 3x squared plus 10x minus 6. Okay, uh, one thing that we could do is check. Do you think that's going to have roots or not? No roots for that one? Well, let's go take a look at the look at it in decimals. Negative 3x squared plus 10x minus 6. I think I have a decimals open already. Uh, negative 3 squared, 3x squared, plus, did I say 10x minus 6? Okay, so look, it has two roots. So, yes, it will give us something when we use quadratic formula. It will output two roots. So let's go do it. So you're going to write down your equations, and you're going to get her going. And I'm going to give myself a little more space. Or I could zoom in. Zoom in is better. And I'll do it in blue. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say my a is equal to negative 3, my b is equal to 10, and my c is equal to negative 6. All right, so now I write down x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Easy. Peasy. All right, now I substitute in. Uh, let me see if I can make this uh, just, I want this thinner. Thank you. Okay. Now I substitute in. x equals negative b, so negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 is 10 squared, minus 4 times negative 3. Notice that I am substituting into brackets in there. Notice that I did that, okay? Because then I can look at it and easily count the number of negatives. How many negatives will be in that expression? Count the negatives. Pion, that one counts. Pion, that one counts. Pion, that one counts. How many negatives? Just because I ask easy questions doesn't mean you can't answer them. Are you going to make me sing again? No, I'm just yes. kidding. Um, yeah. So uh, there's three negatives, right? So negative 4 times negative 3 times negative 6. Will the answer be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because there is a... Yeah, there's an uneven number of negatives. There's an odd number of negatives. So negative 4 times 3, that's uh, positive 12. Positive 12 times negative 6, that's negative 72. Okay? And we're going to have that in a second. 2a at the bottom, that's 2 times negative 3, that's negative 6. Okay? Now I have x is equal to 10, negative 10, I'm sorry, plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 72 over negative 6. 100 minus 72. Oh, I'm already out of space. Oh, my goodness. So I can say, uh, I'm just going to move this over here. Forgive me. x is equal to negative 10 plus the square root of 30, uh, 28. 28 is not a perfect square, so that's why it's giving me janky numbers that are in between the integers, all divided by negative 6. Or negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 
28. Oh, sorry, that's not plus or minus. I just got excited by singing. This is minus here because we already did the plus one over there. Minus 28 over negative 6. And then this gives me the two possible values of x. Those are the two roots. So that's how you use the quadratic formula. It's really just plug and chug. And it's a very powerful tool to use to analyze quadratic functions. You can even use this when they're factorable. And when they're factorable, it will output those nice integer numbers. That's what, what it will do. Okay. Ashley? How do you know if it's plus or minus? It's both. It's both plus or minus. That gives you the two possible answers. Notice that when I get to my last line, I split it up. Plus or minus. Here I do this one is plus and this one is minus. And then those are the two roots. Yeah. Because, yeah, those are the two roots. Sometimes, and now let's take a quick look at the discriminant, okay? Given the quadratic equation, blah, 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 the discriminant here, b squared minus 4ac, this part of the quadratic formula is called the discriminant. Let's just, let me just write out the quadratic formula near that. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, this part in here is called the discriminant. The reason it's called the discriminant is it's the part that's inside the root, inside the radical. If it is bigger than zero, and we've only looked at examples so far that are bigger than zero, okay? If it's bigger than zero, then this quadratic will have two distinct real roots, two roots that are separated. The reason is, I was, want, I was planning on this as a lesson for tomorrow, but there's the other side of this. The other part of this equation is negative b over 2a. And some of you already know the significance of negative b over 2a. Can anyone tell me what that tells me? Oh. Is the equation of the axis of symmetry yes. of the parabola. This tells me where is the vertex found. So that's a tool that I can use when I'm given a quadratic in standard form to find the exact x coordinate of the vertex. Okay? When I have the discriminant to some positive number, that means the roots here are going to be plus that number away from the vertex and minus that number away from the vertex. Let me zoom in and show you that again because there's a lot of content that I'm giving you today, but there's a lot of useful tricks and tools inside this quadratic formula. I'll introduce them now and we'll review them for this week and the next week. Uh, here is negative b over 2a. Gives me the axis of symmetry. Gives me the location of the vertex. This is b, uh, this is b squared minus 4ac, the square root of that, and also divided by 2a. Will tell me how far apart the roots are but because it's symmetrical, that's why it's plus or minus some number. And the amount that it's plus or minus by is the same because it's symmetrical. Hope that makes sense. Then, if the discriminant is zero, this is a solution where it still touches the x-axis, but it's plus or minus zero. I'm 41, plus or minus zero years old. I'm exactly 41 years old. You can add zero or you could subtract zero. It's still 41. And so that's why, in this case, negative b over 2a still tells me the uh, vertex, still tells me the axis of symmetry, but it's saying the roots there are plus 0 and minus 0. It means there's only one point. It's only one root. And that's a situation where you get something like uh, y is equal to, this could be uh, y is equal to negative 2, uh, x plus 2, all squared. So there you see x is minus 2. And that's the same thing as saying, well, it has two roots, but they're the same. x plus 2 times x plus 2. See, there's no distance between the roots. These roots are the same. So that's why it touches only at one point. That's why perfect square trinomials always have their vertex on the x-axis. Oops. And then there's one last situation, and that's where d is less than 0. That means where b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. 
that's going to result in things like I have uh, a quadratic where it's asking me to take the square root of negative one or some number bigger than negative one, like negative eight or something. Can you take two numbers that are the same, multiply them together and give me a negative number? Why not? Yeah, so I would need something like between negative and positive to do that. And that's called imaginary numbers. You don't need to worry about those until you're in university. Maybe upper level calculus here at here. Yeah. 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 Okay, if you'll take a look at the door of 225, Mr. Kujala has a poster and it says, it looks like this. The square root of negative one oh, yeah. part math. This is because the square root of negative one doesn't exist in the real numbers. Okay, it's what's called an imaginary number, and it's by definition i is equal to the square root of negative one. Uh, okay. So this is a, a math pun that the, when you look at it and when you understand this math pun, you are just like, oh, you're just so happy to see that. And then if you're an English teacher as well, like me, you're a little bit annoyed that they didn't capitalize I, because it's always, it's always lowercase i. Okay. okay, so that's a situation where if D is negative, if D is less than zero, there are no roots, and how that shows up in your graph is it, it turns around before it gets to the x-axis. Okay. So we can use the discriminant to answer questions like how many roots does 4x squared plus 3x minus 2 have? You could do the whole quadratic formula. If you find two roots that are different, you've done it. But it's much faster just to use the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. Let's go. 3 is a b squared is 9 minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 2. Now do you see that because negative 4 times negative 2 gives me a positive, that would be positive 8. 8 times 4 is 32. This becomes 9 plus 32. This is 41. I can take the square root of 41. It's not negative. So this has two roots. This is greater than 0. Therefore, two roots. How about 4x squared plus 3x plus 20? It's the same quadratic. All I've done is change that c value. Now it would be b squared minus 4ac would be 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 20. Now I only have one negative here. This is going to be, people can see that's way bigger than 3, right? I'm done. I, I know that that's way bigger than 3. 4 times 4 times 20, that's a lot bigger than 9. That's a lot bigger than 3 squared. So this is less than 0. Therefore, no roots. And when I created this examples, these examples, what I wanted to show you was these are both parabolas. They open upwards. They have the same slope at the, uh, at the y-axis. But one of them has its root down here. Uh, sorry, its y-intercept down there. So it looks like this somehow. And the other one has its y-intercept way up there. So it looks like this. This one doesn't have any roots. This one has two. As I change C, I can get it to have two, maybe one. I can find a point where there's one root and then no roots. All right, cool. So how about this one? 2x squared plus 16x plus 32. We could find out how many roots it has with the discriminant. B squared, 16 squared, minus 4 times 2 times 32. Now watch this, 16 squared, that's the same thing as saying uh, 2 times 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 2. Okay, It's 2 to the 8 because 16 is 2 to the 4. So if I multiply 2 to the 4 times 2 to the 4, I get 2 to the 8. Over here, this is minus... 4 is 2 to the 2, 2 to the 1 is 2 to the 1, and then 32 is 2 to the 5. 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 1 times 2 to the 5 will also be 2 to the 8. 
If you do these on your calculator, you'll find this is zero. This is equal to zero, therefore it has one root. That tells me this must be some kind of perfect square trinomial. Let's factor it. Um, 2x squared plus 16x plus 32. What's my common factor? 2. So factor that out. 2 multiplied by x squared plus 8x plus 16. What does this factor into? Two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 8. What are those numbers? Yeah, 4 and 4. So x plus 4 times x plus 4. Okay, so that is just x plus 4 squared. It's a perfect square trinomial. It has one root. All the perfect square trinomials have one root. Because we can show that by factoring, but it also will show up in the quadratic formula. That they will always have one root. So, to practice this more, look at page 30, numbers 1 and 2. And if you want to see more about where the quadratic equation comes from, you can look at page 293. Uh, it also showed up in the song we saw. And this is one of my favorite things to challenge myself with, is to derive the quadratic formula. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the board, and I'll talk about it later, if I'm successful. <laughs> I'll be successful. Okay. Any questions about using this quadratic formula or using the discriminant to solve these types of problems? No? Okay, cool. Get going on your practice problems.